Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how to set up the SteelSeries Alias Pro for streaming purposes, for capturing content, recording gameplay footage, and more. I'm going to show you the setup process with the hardware, and then what to do with SteelSeries GG, Sonar, and OBS in order to get it working with a single PC setup. We start with a hardware setup, so you've got the Aedis Pro microphone with its XLR connection, and you would connect that XLR cable at one end to the microphone, and then the other end to the controller. Now it's worth noting that I would suggest it's best to get it onto a boom arm if you have one. You see the Rode PSA One Plus here. That makes it easier to put it close to your face, reduce the gain down, and then make it sound nicer. The process for attaching the XLR cable is basically the same. You need to make sure that the Steel Series logo faces you because this is where you're going to be talking into. So that's an important point of note for the setup of this. Now, this requires power. The XLR interface requires you to plug it into a mains. So you'll need a mains power supply that's included in the box. This is the British plug. You may well find a different one depending on the region you're in. You'll note that the little controller says that you need to make sure you disconnect the power or that the power is off before you plug the XLR mic in. So what you need to do is make sure the button is pressed so that it is not powered on before the microphone is connected because you don't want to damage the microphone with that power while you're doing it. The other thing you need for a single PC setup is a USB-C cable. There's two USB-C cables included in the box, and you'll see there's two USB ports on the back of the mixer. And one is for a single PC setup, and then the second one is if you're doing a dual PC streaming setup. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'll link in the description to a full guide from Steel Series on how to do this. But the standard setup is fairly straightforward. Now that's the basics of how the hardware is set up. And as you can see, it's really easy to do that. You will notice that the red light is on for 48 volts of phantom power that this mic requires. And then there's some other highlights here. So you will see that there is a light ring around the dial on the left hand side. That is your gain dial. So you adjust that and then talk. And what you want to do is to make sure that that dial never lights up red. Ideally, you want it to be green, maybe yellow if you're speaking a bit louder. But really, you want to avoid any areas where it might get red. So if it is getting red, you need to turn that dial to the left a little bit so the dot is further over to the left. And that will give you less gain. You see, if you put it on the right, it will give you too much. Once you've done that, download Steel Series GG. And then in there, you have two options, one for Steel Series Engine which allows you to get the firmware updates. So make sure you update the firmware in the software. And this will ensure that you have the latest firmware for the microphone and it's running as expected. The engine that you can see on the left hand side also then gives you access to some settings on the microphone that includes side tone. Side tone is mic monitoring so you can hear yourself through the microphone. So the best way to use this interface is to plug your headphones into the 3.5mm jack on the left hand side. If you've got a wireless headset like the SteelSeries Nova Pro wireless that you can see me using here, then you'd plug a 3.5mm connection in from the mixer to your wireless control station and then you can mic monitor wirelessly and also obviously hear the game audio, music and other things that you'll be setting up in SteelSeries GG. So if you've got those connections set up, you'd then be able to adjust the mic side tone that you can hear yourself clearly through the microphone. I would recommend doing this, but this is the only place you can adjust it. Don't try and use the gain wheel to do it because you will then add more gain to your voice, which is not what you want. A quick note as well is that I found the gain wheel lighting to be pretty distracting. Once you've got it set up, you can use this illumination section to turn the brightness down if you want to, because as standard, it's quite bright, especially at night when you're in a darker room maybe, and you're talking and it's just lighting up constantly, even if you don't need to know, because you've set it at the gain level that you need. So you can just turn that brightness down and dim it right down so it's not as bright, which is nice. Obviously, you've got the white dot on the gain wheel to let you know where the gain's set anyway, so you've got a visual cue there. So if necessary, you could just turn the lighting off completely, dimming that off. Now, you can also turn off the ambient lighting underneath. Obviously, this isn't necessary for streaming. If you don't want it on, you can turn it off, so it's pretty easy to do. With SteelSeries GG set up, if you right-click on Windows and then click on your sound settings, this is what you should see in there. A long list of various different virtual sound channels that you can use within Sonar to then customize the audio. What you want is actually to use SteelSeries Sonar to replace the microphone. So you can see you've got SteelSeries Alias Pro input as the mic option. 
And you also have both Alias Pro Stream and Alias Pro Personal as two virtual sources for the output as well. But ignore those because you want to stick to Sonar instead. So select Steel Series Sonar as your microphone and then Steel Series Sonar Gaming as the main audio source. And then you can go into GG and customize it. Now with SteelSeries GG, you obviously have the power to use Sonar and I would recommend getting that set up and ready to use. In the Sonar, there is a streamer road on the right hand side. So turn that on and then you'll have access to various different settings in there. Under the master tab, you'll see you have personal mix, stream mix and the microphone. So you have to select the right devices for this. Obviously, we're going to use the SteelSeries Alias Pro for each of these and then set that up so that it's basically sending the right audio out. So the idea here with this is that SteelSeries GG and Sonar will allow you to have virtual audio sources for each of the important things. We've got game, we've got chat, we've got media, we've got auxiliary. When an app starts sending audio, you should see it appear in the relevant channel, for example, Spotify. Sometimes they'll appear in different ones. So you can see Spotify was initially in game and you can drag it and drop it into media and then you can adjust the volumes on these. And this is an important part of this process because you'll notice that there's two volume sliders. The one on the right hand side for each of these is your stream audio mix and the one on the left hand side is the personal mix. So what you're going to be here versus what the audience is going to hear. When you first set up streamer mode, each of the stream audios for each of these is actually turned off as standard. You'll see it's grayed out and it has a line through it. So you actually have to activate each of these in order for them to appear in the stream mix. Otherwise, they just won't work. So you have to turn them on individually or you can do it via the cog at the top of each of them. And you can see add to stream mix. This is a safety setting so you don't accidentally stream audio you don't want to. But it is worth knowing when you're going through a setup process that you will need to manually turn these on and then make sure you've got the relevant app in each of those. Once you've done that, you then have the power to control the volume in each of these or then mute them entirely to either your stream or to yourself, which means you can have different volume levels for each. So, for example, with Spotify, you might have copyright free music playing to your audience at a certain level, maybe higher than what you have for yourself, maybe have it quieter for yourself, or maybe the other way around, you're listening to music for yourself that you don't want the audience to hear, you can mute that so you have the option to do it. Now, it's worth noting that once you've adjusted these levels and you've got to a point you want them to, you can check them on the left hand side on the master setting. You'll see there's an ear icon, you can click that to listen to what your audience is going to hear. This essentially allows you to test the levels of the stream mix so that you can check that you're happy with how it is. And this is how you go about setting up the stream. So in OBS, click on settings, then look for the audio tab. And from the mic auxiliary audio, select Steel Series Sonar Stream, alternatively on desktop audio. Now, when you first set this up, you may well notice that the audio mixer is showing that there is some audio creeping in, even when you're not talking. This could be fan noise, environmental noise, traffic noise from outside and other things. So you might find that there's a little bit of levels creeping into the mixer. Now, this is obviously not ideal, maybe alarming, but it's also a great way to set up the microphone and keep an eye on things if you're not quite sure how it's working. You may see this in GG as well with a little bit of flickering in the mic section in Sonar, but it is easy to fix. What you need to do is click on the mic settings and under the mic presets from the drop down, select Alias Pro, either Boom Arm or Desk Stand, depending on what you've got it set up on, and click OK. That will then automatically apply equalizer settings, but more importantly, it'll also turn on Clearcast AI noise cancellation. This AI noise cancellation is actually surprisingly effective at knocking out a lot of that background noise. You can also adjust the noise gate settings down the bottom and noise reduction as well. You'll see if you turn these settings off that you get a lot of background noise. And if you use Streamlabs or OBS Studio and then look at the audio mixer in here, you'll see the levels and how much difference turning these settings on makes. You may well find that Clearcast AI noise cancellation is enough and playing around with these settings will be a worthwhile way of knocking out that background noise and making it sound better. Just keep in mind that if you turn up the AI noise cancellation too much, it may make your voice sound worse, 
So it is better to turn the gain down on your microphone if possible and then tweak these settings. The next big highlight of Sonar is that you can get custom game presets with specific sounds for different games. Custom sound for specific games, so you can see Escape from Tarkov here for example, but not only will you hear a difference, but your audience will hear it through the stream as well. So this is really interesting. It's an automatically tuned EQ profile for specific games which you can see highlights things like footsteps and it works with a variety of different games. You can also turn on spatial audio as a volume boost and smart volume. It's worth playing around with these and adjusting it, but what you'll find is quite a difference in the soundscape. So just to quickly demonstrate that, we're gonna launch Escape from Tarkov and you can hear some of that sound now. So this is in that profile. And then I'll just quickly switch back to default so you can see what a difference that made. And this obviously changes the sound that you're hearing, but also what your audience hears and allows you to hear enemy footsteps and just key sounds. And it's available across different games, but it also impacts things like gun sounds and reloading. It makes quite a big difference, as you'll hear. And if you like that, you'll love this as well. So this setup with different virtual audio profiles lets you do other things. So obviously we've got a game audio where your app is in there. And what you can do is then you can go into OBS and we can set this up as an additional audio profile. So under the audio devices, for example, on desktop audio two, we can select Steel Series Sonar Gaming. What this does is then takes the game channel from the mixer and it puts it into a separate one. So we can name that in the audio Audio mixer is game so we know what it is and then if you go into settings and then output you can then click to add a couple of audio tracks so we've got two audio tracks here the idea being that we'll have one just for the stream mix and a separate one just for the game audio then you can go down and click on advanced audio properties in the mixer and what you want to do is then untick all the tracks because what we're going to do is then we're just going to assign the stream mix to track one and then the game audio to track two the idea here is that you can then have your stream going so you're streaming to an audience but maybe you're recording gameplay clips at the same time so that we then have clean audio for the gameplay so that if you want to do tips and tricks videos, as I often do on my other gaming channel, you can then do that without worrying about, for example, your friends talking over the audio, or if you're talking to the audience, it's going to ruin it. When you drag it into your video editing software, you'll then see two different audio tracks, one with just clean game audio, and then one with the streaming audio. So you have the option to do that. And obviously you can do this with different audio sources in OBS, thanks to the virtual audio sources in the mixer. Another really useful thing that you can do in here as well is obviously with Discord that will drop into your chat mix. So if you're using Discord to talk to your friends and obviously they're appearing on stream and in your gameplay clips as well, then this is where you do that and you can adjust the levels in here. A quick note about this as well is that you can click on the cog up here for each of these and you'll see that you have the ability to add shortcuts. So although the mixer itself doesn't have specific buttons for muting things or adjusting volume individually, because it's all in the software, so you don't have any hardware controls over it, you can still set up shortcut keys. So you can see here that I've got it set up so that I can mute chat, so Discord chat, by pressing Control and M at the same time. This means that if you want to talk directly to your audience on your stream, for example, but your friends are talking a lot, and they're going to be talking over you or you're going to be talking over them. You can just quickly mute them with this shortcut and then you can talk to your audience and then you can unmute them with the same shortcut and just keep on going. And obviously you can set up shortcuts for adjusting the volumes of each as well. And you can do it either personal mix or stream mix. And you have the ability to do that for each of these audio channels. So you can do it for game, 
You could do it for Spotify, for your music or whatever's in media. So there's loads of controls there. You just have to remember what the shortcuts are you've set up. The other thing that's really useful about this setup is that under the chat mix, you also have the option to adjust the audio of your friends. So not only have we had the ability to tweak our microphone as you saw earlier on, but you can also do it to your friends as well. So with inbound chat from your friends, you can choose from a selection of different options. So we've got configuration specifically for, for example, broadcast quality. You can also add Clearcast AI noise cancellation to this, noise reduction, noise gate and compressor, exactly the same settings that you apply to your own microphone, but here these are applied to your friend's microphones. So if you play with people that have terrible mics and it always sounds awful, you could tweak it and make them sound better without having to nag them to get a microphone or buying one for them yourself or whatever else. You can just improve the quality of their microphones with just a few clicks in here. And then that's what your stream will hear and you'll hear improved quality as well. That's a really nice highlight. So obviously you've got not only the EQ profiles for the game, but also for the chat. And then naturally you have them for the microphone itself as well. So I've shown already that we've got it on the Alias Pro Boom Arm and the equalizer settings are here, but you can obviously go through a variety of other settings too. So you might want to change it to balance, for example, or perhaps you want a nice broadcast quality and you can adjust the quality that you're getting out of it there and change and tweak between these and just basically pick one that suits your voice and adjust those. One thing you will notice is when you change these profiles, it turns the noise cancellation off though. So I wouldn't go around changing them constantly, but it is something to watch out for and to play around with and tweak until you get it sounding good. If you've made it this far in the video, hopefully you've got some helpful insights into how to set up the Alias Pro for streaming and for recording purposes, as well as some extra tips you might not have realized of what you can do with this microphone. It's really powerful and gives you access to loads of different things. You will need to tweak around with the settings. For example, those Discord settings that I showed you really gonna vary depending on how loud your friends are, something to bear in mind. But overall, this should really help. If you found this useful, please drop me a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.